In Washington, Assistant Secretary of State Jeffrey Feltman predicted the Syrian people will not give in despite their suffering. He spoke at a Senate hearing. Today's reports from homes are truly alarming. Large numbers of Syrians are living every day under siege, deprived of basic necessities, including food, clean water, and medical supplies. Women and children are wounded and dying for lack of treatment. Innocent people are detained and tortured, and their families left to fear the worst. Yet despite the regime's brutality, the people of Syria demonstrate enormous courage, their determination to continue protesting for their rights, mostly still peaceful protests, is an inspiration and a testimony to the human spirit. Earlier today, I spoke with Haitam al Male, a Syrian lawyer and judge who spent the last 50 years advocating for reforms in Damascus. He's been repeatedly jailed, most recently in 2010, for denouncing the Assad regime. He left Syria after he was released from prison last March. We spoke to him from Istanbul, where he's helping to lead the Syrian National Council. I began by asking him if the Syrian opposition was united and able to speak with one voice. All the opposition in Syria has only one interview, one view for future. They want to finish this regime. They want to build democracy regime. They want to build a regime ruled by law, by, uh, by, uh, uh, by power, parliament, uh, uh, ministers, justice. And all the people must be equal under law. Sir, a lot of the opposition groups have been talking about getting weapons into Syria, into the hands of the Free Syrian Army. Are there people who are ready to help pay for those weapons? And how do you get them into the country? A lot of people need to send weapons to free Syrian army because those defense the people, the, the national people, the civilian people. This is naturally their, their right to do it. And a lot of people around Syria, from maybe from Jordan, from Lebanon, from Turkey, a lot of people know how they can take, they can take uh, the weapons through the border. You mentioned that President Assad has tanks and ships, heavy weapons. Can you ever get enough weapons into the hands of the Free Syrian Army to be able to fight back against an army of 300,000 men? We need to support the uh, Free Syrian Army by medium weapons, because we cannot bring uh, tanks and uh, uh, something like this or helicopter or something like this. But if we give them uh, medium weapons, they can finish this, uh, uh, this regime. And uh, I think the, the free Syrian army will take the step to finish this regime and to protect the civilian, the people. Haitem al Male with the Syrian National Council. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you too. Goodbye. I also spoke with Rania Abu Zaid, who's been covering the conflict in Syria for Time magazine. She's in Beirut. Rania, welcome back to the program. Given the context of everything that's happened in the last couple of weeks, is the Free Syrian Army's retreat from Homs a big victory for Bashar al-Assad? Well, that remains to be seen. The uh, Free Syrian Army, based in the Bab Amr neighborhood of Homs, issued a uh, statement online saying that they were making a tactical retreat to try and uh, ease the suffering, basically, of the 4,000 civilians who have been under constant bombardment for weeks now. They said that uh, uh, they basically didn't have the weapons to defend these uh, civilians, and that's why, one of the reasons why they were pulling out. Now, based on, on uh, you know, these developments, the uh, Syrian government appears to have given permission for the uh, Syrian Arab Red Crescent, as well as the International Committee of the Red Cross, to enter Bab Amr tomorrow. And according to the Syrian uh, National News Agency, uh, they've said that uh, the UN humanitarian chief Valerie Amos is welcome in Syria, but that her earlier request to, uh, to visit uh, the besieged uh, cities and towns in that country was rejected because, quote, it was an uh, inappropriate time for the Syrian government. Homs is a pretty big place, about a million people before all this started. Has word been getting out in the last several hours on the condition of civilians there? 
Well, certainly uh, the uh, Red Cross in both the uh, Arab Red Crescent and the ICRC are expected to evacuate many of the wounded who have been, uh, you know, receiving quite rudimentary medical treatment. If we're to see all of these amateur videos that have, that have been posted on uh, on YouTube, uh, some of the uh, doctors who are still in the city say that they uh, have been. Uh, cleaning, washing and cutting up uh, sacks of flour, basically, and using the, um, the fabric as uh, bandages to try and tend to some of the wounds of these uh, civilians and uh, defectors who have come under constant bombardment now. They say that for many of the wounded, they basically can't do anything for them, and that they're just, you know, treating them as, as uh, well as they can, given the circumstances, and that they're running short on all sorts of supplies. Just a short time ago, I spoke with a leader of the Syrian opposition in Istanbul, and he was very critical of the rest of the world for standing by and letting this happen to the people of Syria. Is there any help on the way? Well, apart from the Red Cross that's going in uh, tomorrow, you know, that's a question that a lot of Syrians, both inside the country and outside the country, want answered. Uh, toward that end, the uh, Syrian National Council, which is the uh, de facto political opposition group, held a press conference in Paris yesterday, and it said that uh, it wants to offer all of its support to the Free Syrian Army, which is the loose band of defectors and uh, armed civilians, which have been uh, pr uh, protecting these uh, protesters and uh, many of these civilians from from uh, the loyalist forces. Uh, the Syrian National Council said that it basically wants to organize, unify, and arm the Free Syrian Army. The problem is that it doesn't seem that they told the Free Syrian Army, because just hours later, the uh, the head of that movement, Colonel Riyad al-Assad, was on Al Jazeera, and he said that uh, this decision to set up a military bureau to oversee the Free Syrian Army wasn't coordinated with his, uh, with his group, and that they wouldn't be uh, participating in this uh, this military advisory bureau uh, so you know while while the people of Syria are, are suffering what seem to be quite in uh, quite dire humanitarian circumstances uh, the political opposition as well as the military opposition in exile continues to bicker and that's a source of, uh, of much frustration for many of the uh, Syrians because uh, while the world is looking for somebody they're looking for a partner and uh, you know the the United States has said this repeatedly, as well as other Western states, they need the Syrian opposition to unify and to step up so that uh, any uh, money, for example, any funds, any weapons that are going to be funneled into the country need to go through a unified body. Quickly before we go, Rania, you gave us an example of the divisions inside the opposition. What's keeping them apart? Is it approach? Is it uh, the eventual Syria they want to see? Uh, tactics in the short term? What are they arguing about? All of the above, you know, it's uh, strategic divisions within the Syrian National Council, for example, between Islamists and uh, seculars. You can't discount uh, egos. You can't discount personalities. There are divisions between uh, members of the Syrian opposition, those who were in exile for many years and those who, uh, who remain in the country, between the youth activists and, and members of the military, even within the Free Syrian Army. This is a very loose band. Uh, you know, the uh, commanders are localized. Uh, most, most most uh, cases, they don't take their orders from from Colonel Riyad al-Assad in Turkey. They sometimes, uh, you know, inform them of operations after the fact. So the divisions are varied, and there are many. Rania Abu Zaid of Time magazine joined us from Beirut. Rania, good to talk to you. Thank you.